If you are thinking about building your own AI agents to handle tasks like managing your calendar, sending emails, or even managing your contact list, this is for you. In this video, I'll break down the exact building blocks of AI agents inside N8N from memory to the prompt that make it act on your behalf. And all of this without a single line of code. By the end, you will know exactly how an AI agent works and how to build the core pieces so it behaves exactly the way you want according to your needs and workflows. We're gonna get started with this, which is the AI agent module. If you think of an AI agent like a robot, for instance, one thing that's gonna power the agent is the brain. And we need an AI model for that. And that's gonna be hooked up right here. It's the chat model. So when you click on the plus, it's gonna offer you to select all the big names in the AI space. And I'm gonna go with ChatGPT for this example. This is where you're gonna define the which model you wanna use. By default, it's giving you for O mini, but I like to use for O. It's a bit better at making decision in my opinion. So there we have it. So now we have the brain. This is gonna power our agent. Now the next thing an agent needs, if you, again, if you think of it like a robot and you're gonna have conversation with it so that it can act on your behalf, you will want it to remember your conversation and all the comments that you are giving. So it needs a memory. This is that next step right here. So we're gonna click on the plus, it's gonna open the window and same thing, it's gonna pre-select all the memories that are available. There are some databases, we're gonna, just for this particular example, we're gonna go with simple memory. And what you can configure is this thing, which is the context window length which is, like it says right here, it's how many past interactions the model receives as context. Meaning you start having a conversation, asking questions. If here we have five, it's gonna remember and know everything about the last five interactions. And that's gonna depend on your use case. You will adjust that. You don't necessarily need something too long. And the way I go about it is depending on what I'm building the agent for, I'm going to test it out because for some cases, like if you use an agent just to book meetings and ask it that all the time, it doesn't need to remember the 20 or 50 previous interactions. That's just an example. So the memory is the second element of the AI agent. So now that we have those two, let's go with the third one, which is the tool again if we go back to the robot these are all the tools that we are giving the robot so it can act on your behalf using those tools <clears throat> so let's take some example there we're going to click on the plus and here the choice is much larger there's many things you can do you can connect specific tools you can connect sub agents that have specific behavior and capabilities and features but we're gonna just keep it simple for this video and this example. The first one we're gonna use, let's say, let's give it access to emails. So I'm gonna go with Gmail, for instance, and I'm gonna add that here. If we go this route, you're gonna here select what you wanna act on inside your email. Well, it could be all the messages, it could be the labels, if you wanna create draft, things like that. So we're gonna stick with message then operations if you want to retrieve emails mark them as read send emails we're going to stay with send and then you put more configuration into what you want to do and this is where the magic happened where you can say let the model define this parameter if you just do that the and this <clears throat> now the the email is going to be sent to, this is going to be defined by the model itself when it's communicating with this tool. Same thing for the subject and same thing for the message, the content of the email. All right, so that's one example. Let's add more tool. Let's add another one. Let's go with the calendar. If we go with the calendar, as you can see, by default, 
it's setting automatically for that for the tool description. The resource, we can manage calendar, but events is gonna be the one you typically want to. I haven't found a use case so far for managing calendars, as in the sense of creating new calendars. I'm gonna use event, and this one is gonna be responsible. Again, similar operations, create an event inside your calendar. Obviously, I've connected all those tools before. This has to be done up front. And here we can select one of my calendar. I'm gonna select this one. And this is where, so it's not gonna be now, like it's predefined here. We want also the model to define this, all right? And there's more configuration that we can add, but just for the example, we're gonna leave it as this. Obviously, if you wanna add attendees and things like that. Okay, and let's keep building with the third one and that's gonna be the last one. Let's go with a Google Sheet for instance and I'm gonna give you the example of what we can do with that. This one is gonna be get rows and here this is where we would select a specific document for instance. I'm gonna go with this and this and yeah, we're gonna leave it as that. All right. <clears throat> so we have given our AI agent some tools that it can use to send emails, create a calendar event in my calendar, but also read a spreadsheet. And in that scenario, Let's say that spreadsheet is going to contain my, all my contact list, for instance. <clears throat> Let's rename it as get contact. All right. Now, we have three tools that are available for the agent to use. Now, the last thing we want to use or we want to configure or do is we need to give the agent more information about the specific behavior we want it to or the way we want it to behave with those tools because you could let the AI decide like this which is if you come here and I think this by default is not there but like this this is where we would add an option and a system message, which is gonna be essentially a prompt where we can define the behavior of our agent. So there is the user message, which is gonna be the input from the chat. If I go back here, this is just a testing chat. So if I open this here, I can test my agent with chatting with it. Say, hello. And it's gonna, send this and you can see what's happening right here and hello how can i assist you today all right and you can see that it went stored in memory went back and it sends the message back to the chat but now we have that it just knows that it is a it is a helpful assistant and the model might be smart enough to start using those tools, but it's better to give him more information and be more intentional and to defining the behavior because that's when you do that, you're going to get a better result when asking your AI agent to do something for you. So in this case, I'm not going to write the prompt, but if we were to use it to create calendar and invite or send emails to notify someone, I would write a prompt like, hey, this is the tools that you have access to and I would list them like those three. You can send email with this one. You can create an event with this calendar tool and you have access to the list of contacts. Now, what we would want to do is if we invite people, we would always want to check the contacts before calling those, right? Because the agent will need the email address of the contact so that it can send the email with that contact or invite it for the Google Calendar event. So I would write in the prompt something like, before 
creating any event or sending any email, always go and check the information of that person inside the contact list, which is this one. And that's how you give more information about how you want the AI agent to behave. Now, this is something like that prompt, you're gonna need to refine it. This is the way I work with it. I test it out and then I refine my prompt because the more you use it, the more edge cases or certain behaviors you find that it's not working as you want, but that's okay because it's just an iterating process in making the prompt better and finding those cases and adding them to the prompt. So what I do, I just take the prompt, I give it to ChatGPT and I say, hey, this is the specific behavior I wanted it to my AI agent to do for me. And I asked this and it didn't do that. Can you improve the prompt for me and make sure this scenario is covered? And I go back and forth just to make sure that it covers this scenario. So that's the tip for you on how to improve the prompt. This is our AI agent. You got the prompt inside. And to recap, this is the brain. This is the AI model that's going to power it. This is where it's going to store the memory. So it remembers all the comments that you give. So it has context. And these are all the tools that you can give, which the list is huge of what you can give and do. And the last thing is the prompt in there. So you specify on how you want it to behave. And the flow goes like this. Here you have a chat, but I'm going to give you an example with this scenario. Well, this is a more complex one, but as you can see, same chat, same brain, same model, chat GPT. It has a memory as well. These are all the tools I gave my agent with sub agents. And I use Telegram as the input where this can process text commands, but also voice notes. So it transcribes the voice note right here so that this gets as an input text. And then it, this step is the output of this, which is just replying inside that Telegram channel. And But that doesn't have to just be an AI agent that you have a conversation with. This could be part of a bigger workflow that's more automated. Don't, don't just see that as something you have to talk to. This could be triggered on the schedule or from other automations. There's... I'm going to say the possibilities are endless. Now, if that gave you ideas for your own AI agents, just tell me in the comments what you want your AI agent to do. And if that was helpful, just hit subscribe because I have more no-code tutorials and walkthroughs coming soon. And if you have questions or want more support in building your own AI agent, feel free to join my free community. It's called Afford Free Time and the link is right here in the description of this video. Now, I'll see you in the next one.